say that again. I said we praise our God, Jehovah. But truly, he is worthy. I think somebody believes that other than me. That he is worthy to be praised. Today is a good day. It's a day that we can all say that we're on top of the ground. And the ground is not on top of us. Come on, stand to your feet. It's a, it's a, uh, I've been looking forward to this day for a long time. Because I believe it's just the right thing to do. To be nice to people while they are yet alive. An old song used to say, give me my flowers while I can see them. So I can see the beauty that they bring. It doesn't stop there, but it says friends and loved ones. They only bring you flowers yes. when you're down and on your sick bed. Yes. But I'd rather have one little old flower now yes. than a truckload when I'm dead. Yes. I want you to pray for someone that you know that needs it. Pray for someone who you may have passed and you saw them. You may not even know their name. But that person at that intersection with a cardboard sign has a name. That person walking the street looking like a zombie. That's a name. Amen. The people that you see sleeping up under the piss elevator. Oh, Lord. Woo! They have names. Amen. Amen. All right. Say it. Say it. And don't get so high and lift it up. When you pass by them, don't, don't talk about them. Yeah. Because if it wasn't for the grace of God. Yes, Lord. Yes. Living in a cardboard box. Yes. Truth yes. be told, let's just keep it 100. Praise Probably 80 or 90 percent of us in here are two paid two, two paychecks away from Amen. being our dope. Amen. Amen. So with that being said, thank God and ask Him right now. We'll give you a moment to do that now. Just thank God for this day. In Jesus' name. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise.
to pay homage and recognize two pioneers of our church. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Little yeah. Lewis and Mary Rose Lewis. This is your day. didn't turn out like you thought it would. You were disappointed because you understood when the other one didn't what till death do us part really mean. Yes, sir. That job that you had campaigned to get <coughs> after you became a co-worker Realized that the job wasn't all it was cracked up to be. But you hang in there because you've got bills that are due. Yes, sir. Yes. Disappointment. Some of us got disappointed as, as recently as this, this week. Mm. Disappointment. Your check ain't what you thought it was going to be. Amen. Take your car in for a brake job. Amen. Say, well, you got some transmission issues. Amen. Johnny Guitar Watson said, ain't that a bitch? Oh. <laughs> Can't get ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say that. <laughs> Can't get ahead no matter how I try. Yeah. yeah. Life is 
life is full of disappointments. Every time you get on the scale to weigh your body, <laughs> enough said. chapter of St. Luke with an audience of local villagers right. Jesus takes time <clears throat> to share a parable without insulting the intelligence of anybody a parable is nothing more than an earthly story that has a heavenly meaning absolutely Yes, So in Yonder's village with villagers, he takes time to share with them an earthly story All right. that has a heavenly meaning. Mm -hmm. But this parable It seems as though it hits on a very touchy subject. Why? Because in the midst of this parable, dealing with this non-productive fig tree, the listeners don't understand that it's them he's talking about. Wow. Yeah. Pastor Show did preach today, but he wasn't talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> well, if the shoe fits, yeah. they sit up. Amen. Yeah. Damn it. But this parable is a warning to God's people because in this parable, the fig tree represents God's people. All right. All right. Israel is the narrative here. And Jesus draws their attention, watch this, to the dangers of being non-productive. All right, go ahead. Wouldn't it be just horrible to live to be 98 years of age, uh -huh. have a home going for the ages, flowers from here to yonder, we march you out there to paradise. All right. And there's a tombstone on your grave hmm. that simply said, did nothing. Have mercy, Lord. Have mercy. Have mercy. <clears throat> there's a danger. There's a danger <clears throat> from just existing every day and at the end of life, nothing to show for it. Amen. Amen. Listen. You can get mad at me all you want to. But I pity you as a parent mm. if you ain't left nothing to your children when you die. Have mercy, Lord. Have mercy. Amen. Just bills and blankets and pots. Mm. <laughs> According to the Old Testament book of Leviticus. Fruit.
from newly planted trees were not to be eaten in the first three years of life. Y'all gotta get this. You plant a tree. The tr you can't get anything from that tree for the first three years. It's there, but it's not yours. He's there, but he ain't yours. After the third year, watch this, you get excited, but it comes to find out from the Levitical law, you can't touch it for three years, and in the fourth year, anything that has been produced belongs to God. So in other words, I, 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 I have to learn to exercise patience and wait my turn. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So three years passed by. Being now this is the fourth year that God gets first, and now I have to wait my turn. So a farmer would not get any produce for himself, actually, if you do the math, until the fifth year. In this parable, mathematically speaking, this man has now been waiting a total of seven years. Sisters, I think seven years is long enough. You've given your time, your body, your mind, your heart, and your soul. And this Negro will go get hunting license, fishing license, a license to carry a gun, but won't get a license to carry you.
However, his message was rejected because Israel reneged on being fruitful. Wow. Let me close on this. What happens when a person's patience with you runs out? I know y'all don't care too much for R. Kelly no more. Oh. But R. Kelly, has, it, it got, you got to give it to the boy with a brilliant song. Yeah. Messed up in the head, but a brilliant yeah. song. Yeah. But one day, I guess through experience, he had said, when a woman's fed up, yeah. Yeah. ain't nothing you can do about it. So what happens when a person's run out of patience with you? That is two Saturdays ago. I spoke at a men's breakfast. About 50 men now on a Saturday morning. It's cold and rain. And I asked this question to all those guys. Self-included. Would you want your daughter to marry a Negro like you? Let me tell you what happens. Each day we are faced with choices and decisions. And we who are blood-bought believers we have a duty to take care of what we have been blessed with. Right. The old people used to put it like this, either use it or lose it. Yep. Speak from experience, don't you? So many people that we know have blown their golden opportunity to produce in this life. Verse 6 in my closing, watch this. Verse 6 speaks of, just like many of us, have high hopes and high expectations. I don't know how it is at your house, but when I was growing up, college was not up for negotiation. You're going to school. I told you all this before. It was in the Spring of 1976, sitting at a dinner table at my mom's and dad's house. I remember them in disarray because they had no idea how they were going to come up with my fees for the whole semester, which was only about $800. They stood there. They played for you. Go ahead. Exactly. <laughs> now, they knew that they wanted to have a better life for me. Parents, don't be jealous of what your children have. Truth be told, I want them to have way more than what I have. Yes, way more opportunities than I had. Yeah. And as a parent, right. it, it, it should be your duty to do anything and everything you can within legalities to make sure that your children have it better than what you had. Yes, Hands, I don't want my children to have to scrape and scruffle like I did. Amen. So, watch this. Verse 6 speaks of high hopes and expectations, uh -huh. just like our parents had for us, All right. just as we have for our own children. Right. I have high hopes and expectations. Mm -hmm. But watch this. <coughs> he, he, in verse 6, I think it says that he comes again this year looking for fruit. Right. Case in point, he has high hopes expecting to see fruit this year. So he has high hopes and high expectations. But in the same verse where thou initially has high hopes and high expectations, in the same verse he's met with disappointment. You 
wanted your little June bug to be a lawyer. <laughs> Instead of a three-piece suit, his suit now is orange with orange flip-flops. Amen. Uh -huh. You had high hopes for your little twin girls, Undernisha and Obernisha. <laughs> Neither one of them panned out like you want. But let, let me say this. Let's be clear. Sometimes in this life, as parents, our children sometimes disappoint us. Yeah. But we have to exercise patience and understand they didn't ask to come here. Yeah. Yeah. My God. If you don't have patience, you got no business working around children. Uh -huh. So you're going to hurt somebody. Yeah. Yeah. But isn't it, isn't it how life is? Life is like this sometimes. That which we think is going to happen. Oh, let me do this. You ever been hit with a curveball? I wasn't expecting this to happen. But then this happened. It's like expecting that Monday morning meeting with the boss, thinking it's going to be a raise. He's telling you, we're going to have to downsize and let you go. Yeah. How many of you know? All right. I had to tell my daughter, she had life real twisted one time. Because she thought if you didn't get a paycheck, the bill stopped too. <laughs> she said, Daddy, you think you, we still got to we still got to pay? If I ain't get no check, I said, check that. <laughs> check that. So I know you came here for a specific reason today. But I dare not take you to the Red Sea and not cross you over. So how do I deal with disappointment? First thing you need to do is realize that you have control of a situation and the situation does not have control over you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I told you all again, if you have something that you can't give up, guess what? You don't own it. It owns you. It owns you. Right. Secondly, weigh your options. The owner has options in verse 7. He can cut it down he can let the tree make it. Yeah. Somebody done something bad to you, wrong to you. You know, I told Mr. James, I don't know. When you get an opportunity, you know how you can tell you grown? <laughs> when you got a chance to do to somebody what they done to you, yeah. but instead you let them make yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. There is someone somewhere who didn't understand that you have a purpose as well as a vision. Yeah. Right. Philip Mayrose, you ought to feel good today. Amen. 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 All three of your children are in this building today. you have potential. You have to show them yeah. rather than tell them. Yeah. Everybody, come on. Hands up like this. Hands up. Hands up. Now, rub your chin. <laughs> Did you see what the pastor just proved? People don't care about what you say. They watch what you Give up on folk. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Why, Pastor? Because somebody had patience with us. Yeah. Yeah. I want you to stand on your feet right now. If you can. That, that 
fig tree could have been you. Amen. Somebody had it up to here with you and your foolishness. But I remember when Bill Clinton was running for president, he had a slogan that said, if not now, when? Every day that we say good morning, it's another day for us to get it right. Yes. Amen. 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 So, with that being said, I pray for you now that God will give you a very important virtue to exist in this life. And what is that? Patience. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We want everybody to have patience with us. Amen. But our patience is so sharp with other people. I find myself a lot of times dealing with mom now, asking God to give me patience. Amen. How many of you know sometimes your parents will take you there? <laughs> but let us remember this. times when people get older as we all do we keep saying good morning yeah. I don't care what anybody tells you or try to psych you out about you can't do at 70 what you did at 20 yeah. 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 You, you, you can't do it yeah. you're going to kill yourself trying right. yeah. so I find myself asking God for patience why? Because if she could do it herself, she wouldn't ask nobody. Yeah. 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 So ask God for patience that I can deal with things that seem like things are just going haywire. Yes, Lord. Give me patience with my family. Patience with my children. Ask God to give you patience for that crazy, ignorant helper next door in that cubicle. Is that too thick for you to come? You gotta have patience with, with your family members. Because yeah. I don't care. I, we all are here today, but truth be told, everybody in here got some messed up family members. Yeah. Yeah. So ask God to give patience. Let's pray. Lord, thank you now as we stand today and sit and bow our heads and we thank you, God. Because you gave us another chance. Amen. You're not the God of a second chance. You are the God of another chance. Because yeah, yeah. we played out our second chance 30, 40 years ago. Yeah, yeah. But Lord, I just ask for a little bit more patience. Yeah, yeah. And then Lord, examine me. Yeah, yeah. If there's anything that you find, yeah, yeah. you have total access yeah. to get me out of it and get me through it. Yeah. We thank God for everybody that's standing in this building right now. We love you and understand that our last disappointment won't be our last disappointment. Yes, but that is promise and purpose in my life. Yes, we ask it all in Jesus' name we pray. Yes. Come on, bless God with your hands. Yes. Thank you. Thank you.